I am presenting specifically on hormone therapy for transgender people, transgender men and women. First, I'm going to discuss an overview of some of the reasons why we give hormone therapy to transgender people. So there's been some research that demonstrates that when we give hormone therapy to transgender people, they have improvements in their mood, they have improvements in social functioning. This is the reason that the World Professional Association for Transgender Health has indicated that gender-affirming hormone therapy for transgender people is actually medically necessary. For transgender women, the mainstay of management is the use of an estrogen and an anti-androgen, one of several, and sometimes using a progestogen. For transgender men, it's generally the use of testosterone. Then we don't generally block estrogen in the management of transgender men. There had been some concerns in the past about a high risk of thromboembolic disease associated with estrogen therapy in transgender women. That was based on data from 10, 20, 30 years ago where ethanol estradiol was used, which we know is thrombogenic, and it was used at doses of up to 200 micrograms a day. Currently, we're using 17 beta estradiol, either transdermal or orally, or in some cases injected, and the risk of thromboembolic disease is very low, and the menopause literature is actually reassuring with respect to transdermal estradiol that the, some argument that there's no increased risk in thromboembolic disease. For transgender men, the biggest concern that I think comes to people's minds are metabolic disorders, concerns about increased risk of diabetes. There is a significant increased prevalence of PCOS and obesity in transgender men before they start testosterone. So the big question becomes, is testosterone going to worsen that? So whenever we're giving any consideration to the risks associated with hormone therapy, again, we have to think strongly about all of the benefits that we know transgender people have when they take hormone therapy. So that said, the, the numbers that we have actually don't demonstrate significant increased health risks among transgender people who are taking hormone therapy. We unfortunately don't have a large prospective cohort, but there is a large retrospective cohort that was published from the Netherlands that has about 900 transgender women and about 300 transgender men. And it was retrospective and it was not adjusted for various additional risk factors. But among transgender men, using mortality as the endpoint, there was no difference in mortality between transgender men and non-transgender women. So basically comparing transgender men who are taking testosterone to what they would have been if they had not ever taken testosterone. And the only difference among cause-specific mortality as well as overall mortality was among injection drug use, which is obviously not related to hormone therapy and in fact may decrease when you give someone hormone therapy because of the behavioral health benefits of doing so. Overall, all-cause mortality for transgender men was not different compared to a control group. Among transgender women, there was an increase in all-cause mortality. It was almost all because of HIV, which is related to a lack of uh, institutional agency that transgender women have, lack of employment opportunities, which results in survival sex work and other participation in the black market and underground economy. With regard to medical causes, there was a 64% increased risk of cardiovascular mortality. However, uh, it was not adjusted for tobacco use. And again, we have to be thinking about all of the benefits of hormone therapy. Some prospective studies that have been done looking at lipids and the effect of hormones on lipids actually show there are statistically significant changes for both transgender men and transgender women. There may be some slight statistically significant worsening of lipid profiles, but that doesn't translate into a really clinically significant impact. And so again, thinking once again about do we really need to worry so much about these subtle clinical impacts when the health benefits are so significant. I think that that's really the take home message is that prescribing hormone therapy to transgender people is something that involves very little additional skill on top of what clinicians already have. It involves no new medications that already exist in the formulary with which people are very familiar. If you're managing menopause, if you're managing contraception, if you're managing low androgens in non-transgender men, if you're dealing with prostate issues, you've handled all of these medications many times, and it just requires a slightly different application and some understanding of the cultural factors and the cultural benefits that transgender people experience when they take hormones. I implore endocrinologists to embrace transgender care and to approach it um, with a degree of openness and curiosity and um, not get bogged down uh, in any of the hysteria that can sometimes come around managing hormones or working with transgender people.